right from the very young age to their old age, Muslims claim to read and recite the Arabic Quran. They send their children to madarsa schools for the same. Many of them boast it with pride. However, when we start discussing with them about the verses in the Quran, they become jittery and start giving excuses to pull out of the situation. One such topic is the Islamic inheritance law. There is a saying that the devil is in the details. This applies perfectly to the Islamic inheritance law. Now before we start discussing about the Islamic inheritance law, I would like to demolish all excuses and loopholes using the Quran itself. Allah claims that the Quran is easy to understand as that is in my language. We have made it, the Quran, easy to understand in your own tongue so that you may be reminded. Surah 44 verse 58. Well, Arabic is not my language. Therefore, I have to take the translations by various Islamic translators. Now that Allah claims that it is easy to understand, I will accept that for now. The writers of the Quran claims that they have not left anything out of this book which means we do not need to go and search anything outside of this book for what is written in it. There is no animal on land, nor a bird that flies with its wings, but they are communities like yourselves, we have not omitted anything from the book. Then they will be mustered toward their Lord. Surah 6 verse 38. Additionally, the Quran claims to be fully detailed in its explanation. Shall I seek other than God as a source of law, when He has revealed to you this book fully detailed? Those who receive the scripture recognize that it has been revealed from your Lord, truthfully. You shall not harbor any doubt. Surah 6 verse 114. So the claims of Quran which we have read are the following. 1. It is easy to understand. 2. Nothing have been left out of the Quran. 3. The Quran is fully detailed and explained. With all these self-claims of the Quran, it should be quite easy for us to understand the Islamic inheritance law, right? So shall we investigate on that? The trouble of inheritance is not a bothering stone when the family is young. This topic becomes a concern when the families grow in numbers as is usual with most Muslim household. And then when the children get married, the friction starts to simmer. So let us read the Quran to know how the partition of a man's property is advised in the Quran. Surah 4 verse 11 and 12 are the references which deals with the partition of the property. Verse 11 says Allah commands you regarding your children. The share of the male will be twice that of the female. If you leave only two or more females, their share is two-thirds of the estate. But if there is only one female, her share will be one-half. Each parent is entitled to one-sixth if you leave offspring. But if you are childless and your parents are the only heirs, then your mother will receive one-third. But if you leave siblings, then your mother will receive one-sixth after the fulfillment of bequests and debts. Be fair to your parents and children, as you do not fully know who is more beneficial to you. This is an obligation from Allah. Surely Allah is all-knowing all-wise. As you would have noticed, the very first statement says that your sons would receive the double of your daughters. What your daughters receive is what causes the base factor for the rest of the inheritance calculation. This portion totally disregards a scenario when a person has no daughters but has only sons. In such a case, Allah has no idea how to deal with it, even though he claims that he has not missed out anything in the book. Surah 6 verse 38. Ambiguities like this in the Quran are sure to create controversies within the families. Muslim imams have confessed to issues like these, arising from the detailed explanation of the clear Quran. So does that not make this Islamic inheritance law something for us to ponder into? Let me ask Mufti Menk, the scholar of Islam. Similar complaints come to us today where people say or the sisters say, my brother has taken the bulk of the money. They're not giving it to me. These people haven't distributed the inheritance. 30 years have passed. May Allah forgive us. If you want your books to be sealed and closed properly, sort out the matters of inheritance no matter what. Okay, now that the Mufti is asking Muslims to sort out inheritance-related problems, let us help our dear friend Abdullah's family to fix the dilemma they are in. Abdullah was a nice family person with a wife and four children, two daughters and two sons. Unfortunately, he passed away last week because of a massive heart attack. So shall we read the Quran and help our friend Abdullah's family with their inheritance division? Abdullah's wife Amina went to the bank and came to know that all that is left in his account was a thousand dollars. Abdullah's parents are also alive. Now let us try to split the thousand dollars according to the Quran. After much reading, 
I was able to build an Excel sheet with the exact Quran formula as was written in Surah 4:11 and 12. Notice these highlighted text from the Quran. As Abdullah had two daughters, they will be getting two-thirds of the total asset which is 66.67%, and as Abdullah had two sons, they should get the double of what the daughters get. That would be 133.33%, therefore, the total assets that the daughters and sons would get is 200% of what Abdullah left. In short, they would get a total of $2,000, the $1,000 become $2,000, after the division of inheritance. This mathematical equation in the Quran is no less than any Ponzi scheme where the money is multiplying when it ought to divide. As we know that Abdullah's parents are also alive, they should each get one-sixth of his asset. Together, they will get one-third of the total asset. Moreover, his wife will get one-eighth of the total asset as per verse 12 of Surah 4. According to the formula of the Quran, each daughter will get $333.33, which would total to $666.66, out of the total $1,000. So when $666.66 is removed from the $1,000, we have a balance of $333.33 left. And how much do we owe to the brothers as per the first sentence of Surah 4 verse 11? We owe them $1,333.33, but we are just left with $333.33. Welcome to the world of Islamic mathematics. In this scenario, we would need an extra $1,459 to give everybody, as per the equation of the Quran. No wonder there are fights within the families of Muslims because of these confusing mathematical formula given by Allah. Take a look at this pie chart where the daughters have taken away two-thirds of the asset, and sons are left with one-third when they are expecting the double of what the daughters have received. <laughs> Am I the first person to have found this mathematical blunder of Allah? Oh no, Muslims translators knows this way before. Therefore, they have done their part of the twisting. Let me show you a screen where the progressive twisting of Islamic translators are exposed before all. Watch these three translations and see how the first translator Pickthal translated it plainly, whereas the second one by Sahih International added the word only in a bracket, and the third one Yusuf Ali did not even have that little honesty, but rather added the word only as if it was part of the original Arabic. By adding the word only, they are assuming that the readers can be made to think that this is a case where there are no sons. Let me translate the Arabic text for you and show how the word only is not part of the Arabic. Therefore it has to be understood as a verse which has no exclusions and is to be universally applied. Read this English translation of the Arabic and you will not find the innovative word only as inserted by dishonest Quran translators in it. How come Muslims do not use their intellect and challenge these translators? I guess they have to toe the official line to escape the wrath of Allah. Before I close this video, I would like to bring your attention to another interesting point in this verse. Muhammad ends this verse by telling us that the end goal of the splitting of inheritance is for the purpose of the benefit of the person. Come to think of it. How can the person who is dead be benefited by the splitting of his inheritance? This is an impossible scenario. So who is the one who can be benefited by it? Shall we ask Mufti Mank again? Allah has given each person a leeway of up to one third to decide whom they would like to give for as long as the person they want to give is not an heir that has been declared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These rules are very deep and I think we need to learn them. Oh ho, I got it now, wow, finally the Mufti has cleared my doubt. The one who would be benefited would be the Messenger of Allah, as he can expect a third of every inheritance to land into his bosom. Thank you Mufti Mank for the deep insight. While we are still trying to understand all these so-called nuances of Islamic mathematics, we are sorry to inform that the Quran does not help the case of Abdullah's inheritance, we therefore moved on after throwing the Quranic formula for inheritance to the place where it belonged. We have come to the end of our video. If you like our content, do click the like button and subscribe to our channel. 
do share it with your family and friends whom you think will like our content. Till we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you.